Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. Ever since I got the Fractal Axe FX3 a few weeks ago, I've been absolutely blown away by it. Now, personally, I haven't switched on any of my amplifiers or any other effects since I got the Axe FX. And the way that I've got the Axe FX3 set up is probably very different to a way that a lot of people use it. Now, personally, I feel there's so much in the Axe FX that you can get to option paralysis where you're spending more time trying to find different sounds or create different sounds and less time playing. Now, for me, that's not the right way to do it. I'm not saying that's the same for everybody, but the way that I like to use the Axe effects is to have one patch with a couple of different amplifiers inside that patch, but to almost run it like an amplifier and effects board type of sort of situation where I'm not switching between loads of different patches and loads of different amps. So what I thought I'd do in this video is just to go through that one patch with the eight different scenes and just show you all the different sounds that I've got inside that patch. I'll start from my first scene, which is an overdriven rhythm patch, and it sounds like this. One of the things I've been really impressed with with the Axe FX3 is how well it handles drive tones. Now, I guess you could say it doesn't sound like an amp in a room. Now, personally, that's not really what I'm after. I work in my studio five days a week, and when I monitor guitar tones, it's coming through my studio monitors. Now, personally, I really like the sound of pre-mixed sort of guitar tones, and that's what I've been used to ever since I've been working in studios. I'm not really used to having an amplifier blaring in the background while I'm trying to record and hearing it from one source. I'm quite used to hearing it in a stereo field. And the Axe Effects, like many other modelers, works perfectly for this sort of thing, as you can set up sort of big stereo delays, big stereo reverbs, and actually get the sort of sense of the guitar, how it would sound in a track. Personally, I do think it sounds like an amp, it reacts like an amplifier, which is very different to a lot of other processes out there. But this to me sounds like exactly what it is. If you look in amp one, I've got a plexi, and in amp two, I've got an AC30. Now, personally, that would be my sort of ideal amplifier combination. And I guess what I grew up listening to, a sort of a Marshall sort of tone, and a Vox AC30 sort of tone. The Marshall, you've got all that sort of Marshall mid-range, which really helps add to the body of the sound. And the clarity of the AC30, or the chime, as we call it, is adding that nice sort of top end, which has that clarity to really help your guitar cut through a mix. If I now mute the different amps, you can hear exactly what I'm doing. So my top row sounds like this. And as you can hear, I've got that panned over to one side. If I mute the other side, now I've got both amps quite driven, but they're both very different sounding amps. Now what I found is when you do that and you actually create two different amps and you pan one sort of hard left and hard right, you get this massive sort of stereo sound. <laughs> And it can actually sort of blend the two sounds. So you've got like lots of top end on one amp and less top end on the other amp and it just creates this really fat overdrive tone. <laughs> so there's scene number one. Now if I go to scene number two, now this is exactly the same amp combination but I've just brought in a FET boost. So there's my standard lead tone. Now if I go to scene number three, this is my clean tone.
Now, I've seen lots of things online where people are saying that the Axe FX doesn't do good clean tones, but to me, that's a great clean tone. See, so it's got a little bit of grit on it. Now again, I've still got that FET boost before the amps and I've changed the actual amp types. So we've got the FAS rhythm on, uh, the, first, on the first amp and a Brit JTM45 on the second amp. Now, one of the things that I really love about the Axe FX is how well it takes pedals going to the front of it. So if I put on a boost pedal in front of that, get some extra gain going in the front of the amps and it does feel amp like because it doesn't sort of crunch up digitally like you'd expect some modelers to. Patch number four is exactly the same patch but with a trem. Patch number five is my drive tone with the fuzz. Patch number six is a variation on my lead tone where I've added a type of sort of shimmer reverb to it. Sounds like this. Scene number seven is a clean tone with the shimmer. And patch number eight, I haven't actually assigned anything to. So basically what I can do from these seven scenes is to create any sort of guitar tone that I might need for recording or live work. Now, if I wanna add in extra effects, I've got loads more slots that I can load in those effects into. So really the options are limitless to what I can do with this. Personally, as I said at the start of the video, I've been absolutely blown away by the Axe FX. Now, I must say, this isn't a sponsored video at all. Fractal don't even know I'm making this video. And a quick story, I actually tried to get hold of Fractal about two months ago to actually ask if there was a way that I could possibly borrow an Axe FX so I could do a full review on it. Fractal weren't helpful at all. And if I'm completely honest, I felt their email was a little bit rude. So the fact that I went out and actually bought one of these and I've kept it, I think shows you how good it is. Anyway, I really hope you guys got something out of this. If you did get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe, click on the bell button, and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from the Studio Rats. I'm Paul, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.